Okay, so continuing with the transport across membrane section, this one is osmosis. This is so frequently confused by students. I'm actually going to publish this one for no charge on YouTube. Uh, so if you haven't, if you're not familiar with these uh, lessons that I've been giving, then check out my website tailoredtutors.co.uk, and uh, yeah, check out all the other great information there. What you should be doing during these videos is taking notes and being really active, making sure that you are sitting down at a desk and giving it your full attention. Doing this on the train or the bus is not going to help you out very much. Let's start with a key term definition, osmosis. Okay, so osmosis is the passive movement, so not requiring ATP, of water molecules from uh, high water potential to an area of low water potential, and it's across a partially permeable membrane. So this is the sign for water potential, so high water potential. Again, I'm just going to use it so we get familiar with it. Understanding what high water potential means and what low water potential means is the key. Going from high to low is just like diffusion. But what students get confused with all the time is that it's the water potential from high to low. And I'm going to try and explain to you as clearly as possible what that is. So on this side of the page, we're going to do high water potential. And on this half, we're going to look at low water potential. So. I'm going to draw a diagram and I'm going to have the characteristic features of each of these. And then we're going to look at how they relate to exam questions as well as a bit of a bonus. So what do we mean by high water potential? Well, it has the higher percentage of water molecules. So basically pure water is 100% water molecules, 0% other things. The things that we in dissolved in a, in a substance we call the solute. So 100% water molecules would be the highest possible water potential. It also would have, this side would have the lowest percentage of solute, or we could say it's the low solute concentration. We could also say therefore that it's hypotonic. Hypo means low, tonic means concentration. So we can look at the opposites of this for water potential, uh, low water potential. It's going to have obviously the lower percentage of water molecules. It's going to have a higher percentage of solute or it's going to have the higher solute concentration. And we could describe it as hypertonic or more concentrated. So the diagram is going to go here in the middle. So this should be across a partially permeable membrane. So this is me drawing my partially permeable membrane like a surface cell membrane. So high water potential has got a low percentage of solute. So the solute in this example, I'm going to do a molecule of glucose, which is a hexo sugar. I'm going to draw it as a hexagon. I'm going to draw it quite big, too big to fit through the gaps. On this side, we're going to have a high concentration of solute. Okay, we can now see that there's more uh, solute here less solute here. I'm not going to draw every single water molecule touching each other as they would be in a liquid, but I'm going to draw them equally spaced as much as I can. So let's just every sort of centimeter or so draw a water molecule. Okay, without packing them in too much, roughly one a centimeter. And let's just do the same over here because water is going to fill all the available space that it can that's not occupied by the solute. Maybe one in there. there. Okay, so We've got the high percentage or the, the highest, as a percentage, this is mostly water. As a percentage, this is a lower percentage of water. So again, this is we're going from, from high to low. But if you look at this without thinking about it, you think, oh, I can see these things. These are the big shiny red things. There's more here and there's less here. And the students make the mistake of thinking, oh, draw an arrow which way water moves. It goes from high concentration to low concentration. Well, that's not right because you're, you're doing high concentration of solute to low concentration of solute. Water goes in the opposite way to try and dilute this the strongest mix. So water will actually move in this direction, the net movement. So remember, water potential is opposite to the solute concentration. 
This is the thing that most students get wrong all of the time. And how do they tend to ask in these exam, exam questions? Well, they ask about the change in water potential, and they ask about the movement of water molecules, and whether that affects the cells. Do they shrink? Do they burst? What happens to the change in shape or size of the cells? Could be organelles. It doesn't always have to be cells. Remember, animal cells don't have a cell wall. So if they have a very, if you dissolved lots of solute inside an animal cell, it would make the water potential very low or more negative. And that would mean lots of water would rush into the cells by osmosis. And without a cell wall, they can't resist that. And it's called osmotic lysis. So osmotic lysis is when a cell explodes or bursts because the water has rushed in because the water potential inside it was too low. To get more biology videos from me, subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't forget to try out my complete A-level course in the free trial over on the Taylor Tutors website. Up next, you can transform your grade in about an hour with my grade transformations playlist, or you can watch the video that's been magically selected for you from the people at YouTube.